Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Ray the Flying Squirrel here, and I am back for yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Butter Rehydrated for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC Steam, Nintendo Switch, and there was one in particular platform I totally forgot about, and yes, this game also came out on the iOS devices, meaning Apple smartphones, or um, you know, Samsung phones, and you name the rest. So that's the only thing I forgot to mention about for the majority of this game so far. So last time, we have basically managed to able to, well, suffice to say that we're pretty much almost done with the jellyfish fields, and on top of all that stuff though, we did somehow manage to able to did done the first half of the forms of downtown Bikini Bottom. So overall, we did that pretty decently, I'll admit it though. So today for this video is the fact that, oh, and also we did manage to able to finally get a chance to play as Sandy Cheeks, in this case the best character in the whole game, because, you know, her lasso is pretty awesome and stuff like that. And uh, today for this video is the fact that we're about to continue things on in downtown Bikini Bottom by able to actually, well, what else? Keep on exploring the entire world, but this time we are now going to be able to explore onto the rooftops. So, anything else should be uh, a pleasant surprise, all things considered. Oh, and another thing, I do apologize for that particular ringtone noise you'll be hearing. I think it's clearly because Mighty somehow messaged me for some reason, because he's just saying about the fact that aren't you gonna able to pack up the suitcase eventually? Well, I'll try to do that after this recording session is done, Mighty, bro. But anyway, enough about that, GB Jabber. So anyway, um, and another thing I would like to classify for noticing this is the fact that, uh, well, as far as I'm aware, um, today's day is of course the, uh, the 9th of June today, in this case in 2022 today, so it looks like about the fact that the Summer Game Fest is actually starting, so because of this though, I can't tell you what, what certain game announcements they'll bring into, for the sake of the forms of the Summer Game Fest just yet though, but in fact I will mention more details about that, and during at some point, possibly maybe next Tuesday, so... Because obviously that uh, Maxi must able to actually continue things on for his uploading schedules for the sake of the forms of, you know, Super Mario 3D All-Stars and the Super Mario Sunshine game. So, uh, but um, overall we're actually getting, have some bit of progression now. Oh, and speaking of such though, is the fact that also during the forms of that specific time is that tomorrow, that uh, Mario Strikers Battle League Football is going to be releasing tomorrow for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I was very excited, but at the same time, though, is the fact that, remember what, um, I believe that, uh, I think I said this before, uh, ever since in the second part of this playthrough, is that, well, unfortunately, though, you have to stick up with the forms of the bare bones content at the beginning, so as a result, though, you start the game off as in 10 playable characters. Speaking of which, though, is the fact that obviously the DLC is going to be the thing in the future, but I do found out there was actually a possibility of the leak, despite the fact that of Grain of Salt. So as a result, though, that uh, apparently, though, um, there was actually some bit of uh, data mined for the sake of the forms of Mario Strikers Battle League Football, which apparently, though, when it comes to DLC departments of the game, um, I think potentially they might be able to actually bring in 10 extra playable characters, so that brings us a grand total of 20 playable characters, which it kind of reminds me of the forms of the character roster for the sake of Super Mario Party, except the fact that it's a football game, not just the forms of uh, going from space to space individual kind of style. So because of this though, yeah, I'm very curious to see what the actual uh, DLC playable characters are going to be. But I mean, sure, we'll find out and during at some point later on this month, or in some cases in the later months to come. So as a result though, because uh, like I said before, it's the 9th of June today, so because of this though, oh, are you kidding me? I somehow died after I somehow managed able to have no uh, time at all for, you know, longer invincibility frames to take. So, but regardless, we still managed to respawn right in there, so I think I should be okay as far as I'm concerned with that stuff, so... So yeah, um, speaking of which though, is the fact that I think that uh, some toy sales, and I think also 
that um, us and Mighty and Pac-Man have already mentioned about that, I think anyway. That uh, we were expecting to be able to actually see Sonic Frontiers gameplay trailer. Well, turns out that recently, ever since it about, um, I would say nine days ago, recently, including buddy forms of maybe later on today, that uh, recently we got ourselves a brand new gameplay trailer for the sake of Sonic Frontiers. And for I saw it, in addition with the forms of the rebranded logo, Oh man, it looks so awesome, especially noticeable about the fact that I cannot wait to see how the gameplay footage actually plays out. I mean, sure, it does have some combat, um, uh, combat, uh, beat-em-up segments here and there, just like it informs of how it does it on Sonic Unleashed for the Sonic, uh, Werehog and, uh, Sonic Boom Rise of Lurik. Anyway, enough about that. I have no idea why I just did the expression of the Squidward's voice, but that's besides the point, because nobody cares about Sonic Boom, uh, Rise of Lyric, or the Wii U ever again, just because it's the most glitchiest games out of them all. So, with no fixes or tweaks here and there. I mean, surely Sonic 06 is also very glitchy as well, and so applies to Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance. So as a result though, although, potentially speaking, with Sonic 3 Riders, that at least that game wasn't that glitchy, although the only time it's glitchy is just to control calibrations, so... Especially noticeable because it's bad enough that game requires you to play as the Kinect. So as a result though, no control input whatsoever. So because of that though, yeah, I have no idea when that Sonic Rider series will ever come back after that really, really, uh, a massive negativity for the release of Sonic Free Riders on the Xbox 360. So, yeah, I just have no idea why I just explained this right from the start. So... Anyway though, so um, oh yeah, I should probably also mention about this actually, is the fact that some people complain about the forms of the different physics, for the sake of the forms of Sandy's lasso ability, that it just feels a bit, I don't know, kind of loose-like, because compared to the forms of how it does it in the original version of the game, that basically it's all normal and everything, so in the forms of this remaster remake, uh, basically the actual movement feels a bit, a little bit more loose-like, so... I think some, some people usually complain about it, but honestly it doesn't bother me too much though. I will must admit it though right away, so... Anyways, let's go and switch over back to Spongebob, because he's the only one you can able to actually ground pound those switches. So just in case we can able to progress, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. And I should probably also mention about this as well, that, um, yeah, like I said before, this game also came out on the iOS devices, which, the only thing it does, though, is the, it, it's the fact that they're able to actually set up the controls as touchscreen controls. Like, you do have the, uh, the movement stick, and especially noticeable with the jump button, and of course the bubble wand attack button, and also just the another bubble move uh, attack ability, so, uh... And there's also the actual key icon you can able to tap, which I'm guessing it's more accurately trying to able to actually access to um, other areas or any other levels for that matter. Mind you, I haven't exactly looked upon that much of the uh, the iOS version until right now, because as far as I'm aware, that I completely forgot that the iOS version of this game exists. So, but at least it plays fairly similar to the forms of how it does it on the PlayStation 4. Xbox One, PC Steam, and of course Nintendo Switch version, but I will have to admit it though right away is the fact that, um, well, when it comes to the PS4 version, I think it's the most definitive way of playing the game in my opinion. I mean, surely that the Switch version looks a bit worse than the uh, other two versions counterparts, because one thing I should probably also mention about this as well, that uh, the Switch version suffers from the forms of some very blurry imagery, and also on top of all that stuff, though, if you try to look upon the forms of the actual in-game cinematic cutscenes and stuff like that, then uh, basically it just gets all like really, really off, you know, models and stuff like that, with all that artistic, uh, you know, screwage and stuff like that, even though it's hard to explain, because it's been about two days ago since I actually last played this, because, well, as far as I'm aware, I'm just pretty, uh, Pretty excited to see what uh, Sonic Frontiers is going to bring us into. And of course, I forgot to mention about the forms of, uh, well, specifically of how, uh, although it's kind of thinking about it, it's basically an open zone game. So because of that though, everything else will be a lot more bigger than I expected. And also as far as I've noticed, is the fact that the actual logo of the game 
Oh man, it looks so spot on. Especially noticeable after the events of uh, the Game Rewards journey forms within last year. That uh, it's just the forms of the actual uh, temporarily text title. But looking on the forms of the logo finalized, that's oh man, it just looks so cool. Although it does kind of remind me of the forms of the similar kind of logos from, oh, let's just say, Sonic uh, Unleashed, Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, Sonic Lost World, or to me more specifically, Sonic Forces. Although, despite the fact that most people got very, very, very disappointed with the forms of Sonic Frontiers when that game usually came out. Well, initially anyway. Well, I still find the game to be okay, but it's nowhere near as the best though, unlike Sonic Generations or Sonic Colors, or heck, even with the forms of Sonic Adventure 2, or, um, Sonic Adventure, if you will. But anyway though, so enough about that, so let's just go ahead and move on to the next section, which takes place in the Sea Needle, which... Of course, we do need able to take down more robots, and I get the feeling we do need able to take down uh, some more Tiki Heads, in addition with the explosive ones, so... And I think Mr. Krabs is just right in front of me. Someone's broken the Sea Needle! That's horrible. The Sea Needle is the cradle of Crochet Corner! Yes, yes it is. But what's more important is that there are Tiki's and shiny objects just outside the windows. Mr. Krabs, how can you think of money at a time like this? Easy. I just clear my mind. Money. 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 Now listen here, boy. You know that I'll give you golden spatulas if you bring me shiny objects. But I'm going to sweeten the deal. If you can break all the tikis here at the Sea Needle, I'll give you a bonus golden spatula. Why would I want to break the tikis, Mr. Krabs? Uh... Because they were laughing at you and calling you funny names. What kind of funny names? Um, you know, SpongeBob butt pants. That's not very funny. Uh, no. But they said your mom was ugly. Ugly? All right, Mr. Krabs, break them, I shall. You've got a deal. So yeah, we got to break all these tiggies, of course, so uh, yeah, that basically explains it, so uh, anyway, so let's activate the checkpoint, so just in case we can able to respawn onto that exactly the same spot if I somehow die. So anyway, and also another thing as well is the fact that I somehow managed to able to fix that issue with the forms of that particular, uh, the preview, uh, gameplay footage keeps on lagging most of the time in the past, but uh, thankfully it's been fixed for the most part. Although it will come back again eventually though, which it can be sometimes feels a bit temporarily, but either way though, it knows what it is for the most part, so... In fact, uh, let me know in the comments below for the question of the day. Uh, are you guys excited when it comes to able to see some more game announcements thanks to the forms of the Summer Game Fest this year? Especially noticeable with the forms of that pretty amazing gameplay footage of Sonic Frontiers. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Oh, and also another thing is the fact that obviously we got some more info for the sake of the forms of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which I honestly have no comment at, uh, at all. Clearly because I think I should probably save that conversation until the next day. So because of that though, I just want to able to save that conversation until for later. So, oh, and then also another thing as well. Oh, Jesus Louise, I'm almost going to get hit by that particular Tartasaurus robot. But thankfully we've already did manage to dish him out like so. And, um, yeah, because uh, I'll try to discuss more details about the forms of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet uh, during the forms of the next day. Or to be more specifically, uh, next Tuesday, to be more specifically, because, well, it seems totally obvious about the fact that, you know, Maxi's still working on Super Mario 3D All-Stars, so, uh, which, you know, very glad they're able to go back into that game again, because obviously he really enjoys that particular playthrough so far. Especially noticeable that it's now been upscaled to 1080p, no longer gonna be on, uh, you know, downgraded quality or anything else to be more specifically for 480p and all that stuff. But uh, it knows what it is for the most part. So, uh... And yeah, um, aside from all that stuff though, I think that's as far as I can try to describe about it. Oh, and another thing as well is the fact that I'm pretty sure that um, when it comes to Mario Kart Tour stuff, um, I believe we've almost nearly at the end for the sake of the Cat Tour, which uh, I still get myself some pretty bad RMG. Although, I think I should probably discuss on that right right now, actually. Um, there's actually a new tour just recently came up for about uh, a week ago, which I don't suppose I 
think I sort of mentioned about that, but I'm gonna probably go say this anyway, so... Recently, we got ourselves a new toy, which appears to be the Cat Toy, which basically, not only does it contain Cat Mario and Cat Luigi to be involved with the Evolves Lab particular another cosmetic character skins, but also about the fact that we actually got the whole entire cast based off from the forms of Super Mario 3D World. Well, the only time exception being is the forms of uh, Bowser Jr. to somehow disguise as the forms of a, uh, a cat form from Bowser's Fury Mode. But um, as a result of that kind of stuff though, I think that's as far as I can just, just try and describe it. Oh, in addition to the forms of Sprinkly Princess as well, so uh, I suppose I don't know when she might as well be back, because the last time we see uh, the Sprinkly Princess was not technically counts the uh, the port of uh, Super Mario 3D World, but I'm referring to as the actual games or newer games that's been released during that time, which just appears to be by the forms of Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. I think that was the last time we see uh, Sprinkly Princess. Again, don't count the forms of the ports to the Switch ports of Super Mario 3D Worlds because it's exactly the same, aside from new improvements and stuff, with online play in addition to that. So, yeah, I think that might be summarized as such, so... And another thing I, I want to classify for something about this, with the, when it comes to the, uh, the cat tour, actually I'll get to more in a second, because we've cleared out every tiggies. Here's the golden spatula, like I promised. Thank you, Mr. Krabs, I appreciate it. So of course, that's, uh, you're probably thinking about the fact that where's another golden spatula? Well... That won't be until for later, if we learn every single bubble moves. So, for now, let's teleport back to the beginning of the downtown Bikini Bottom, and talk to Mrs. Puff, and get ourselves another golden spatula, after getting every single steering wheels. So, yeah. Pretty swell on down, yeah. SpongeBob, <laughs> I'm impressed. How did you fight? Well, there were these robots. I met Sandy, and the lighthouse was... Okay, okay. Sorry I asked. Here's the golden spatula that I promised you. Thanks, Mrs. Puff. Now I'll help you guys evacuate. But SpongeBob, you don't have a driver's license. Oh, don't I? No, no you don't. Well, if I don't, then what's this? A library card. Oh. So, um, yeah, let's just obtain that, and of course we got another trophy, trophy after doing so, so I've had a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a tongue twist in the end, folks, so I do apologize for that. So, of course, we will be back for more of the forms of that particular downtown Bikini Bottom and doing at some point, because, obviously, like I said before, we do need to be able to learn every single bubble moves first, so... Anyway, so I believe, I think it's about time that we can able to move on to the next world, which it might be familiar to you if you ever played the original version before, which is of course, Goo Lagoon. So hopefully we were able to actually grab some more golden spatulas from there, so either way though we can able to expect that we'll get this thing started. But before I do with all that stuff though, let me, uh, yeah, let me activate this particular world right here, and um, I suppose we should probably get this thing started. So, I was expecting if I was trying to talk to Patrick for a moment, but I think I should probably save that for later, if we get 10 more of those socks, so... Yeah. Ah, uh, Goo Lagoon. A sun-drenched beach of sludge at the bottom of the sea. But, all is not well here on Paradise. So of course, welcome to Goo Lagoon, in this case the actual iconic beach setting for the sake of the forms of the TV series of Spongebob Squarepants, of course. So, yeah, you probably get the idea. And of course, if you ever played the original version of the game before, this is the place it will be a good spot if you're trying to able to form some more of those shiny objects, basically. Especially noticeable coming up later, so... Oh boy, so we got ourselves the robots with a uh, an umbrella trying to slowly gliding down and trying to able to ambush this one of those townsfolk. That caused the thunder clouds to rise and zap. So of course we do need to able to press the triangle button until we able to just well deal with this robot right here. So we can able to Dish them out, like so, and yeah, there goes that. And of course, just like any forms of how it does it on downtown Bikini Bottom though, if you go over there, 
are basically Spongebob just goes like, help me, animation, kind of like, you know, trying to survive or something. I have no idea. It's been a while since I actually just managed to able to discuss on something like this. But anyway, oh, here's Larry again. After the events of the rooftops. Do I look burned? Well, you do look a little red. Barnacles. That darn robot. Robot? Yeah, a big robot stole everybody's sunscreen. Oh no! Everyone will burn! And then they'll get all itchy and peel. Exactly! You can't spend a day at the beach without sunscreen. That sun is way too hot. That robot is out on the island. Nobody can get to him. SpongeBob, maybe you can use those sun reflectors to point the sun's rays on that robot. If you hit one of the buttons on the side of a lifeguard tower, the reflector will turn. Connect all the towers and the light will shoot right out of the big reflector on the island. Then all you have to do is swim out to the island and turn the big reflector onto the robot. I'll stay here <laughs> and protect the babes. But I, uh, can't swim. Well, because you know what uh, also cannot swim? Well, I do know for one thing that uh, Klonoa cannot swim because obviously Klonoa was a cat. So, uh, yeah. That might be something that I suppose that uh, some toys else, including, uh, I think somebody uh, else already mentions about that either. So, uh, I wonder why he's saying things weirdly enough, because aside from all that stuff though, I'm just so, so excited to be able to see Sonic Frontiers getting itself as more info and stuff like that. So, either way though, all needs left now is just basically we can able to actually mention about God knows the release date or something, but... Our guess is, is the fact that it will be still be speculated to be released like during at some point in this holiday season, along with the forms of, uh, you know, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, basically. So, uh, oh god, talking about the forms of uh, another massive differences between the forms of the original version of this game than the likes of this remastered remake is that, well, the lighting effects is actually pretty nice, but there are some uh, color palettes might be felt a bit slightly off in certain levels. Well, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the actual uh, the lighting effects that all the lighting engine in this remastered, or a remake rather, but uh, it's just the fact that it doesn't felt quite match up to the forms of how it does in the original version in my opinion. Like, there's one in particular level coming up, that's, um, I think I'll probably save that conversation and during at some point after we able to actually get back from, uh, you know, the summer vacation and stuff like that, which I suppose that I think Maxi has already mentioned about this a lot, for the sake of the forms of the Super Mario 3D All-Stars so far, so we can pretty much expect about the fact that what's gonna be up during that time, so, uh, oh, and another thing I would like to mention, I'm very glad that, uh, you know, with the forms of that particular, uh, indicator puzzle thing, uh, thankfully, um, if you somehow die, if the actual, uh, the actual, uh, the sun laser thing will decide to able to reach on that specific robot, I'm pretty sure that particular progression has saved, um, ever since in journey forms have been, uh, in the original version that you have to restart this entire process again while trying to do a massive guesswork. Whilst the forms have been a remaster remake, I'm pretty sure the actual progression has been saved, I think so anyway. Mind you, here has been about you know, two years ago since I actually last played this remaster, especially noticeable after playing through uh, the original version, while the forms of the remastered game will be releasing on its approach, so... Yeah, you get the idea about that, so... Oh, we saved one of those kids by popping those balloons in almost instant, so... And also, Mrs. Puff was still showing up. Oh no! The children's balloons have been overfilled! They're carrying the children out of control! I don't know, Mrs. Puff. It looks like they're having a lot of fun. Yes, too much fun if you ask me. You can save the children by bubble bashing each of the balloons. Bubble bash all the balloons, then come see me for a reward. Can do, Mrs. Puff. So, of course, we do need to save the children again, but this time in the HD format. So, uh, yeah, I guess that probably explains it. Oh, remember that particular pop-off? 
uh, little thing, just somehow managed to be able to come a little bit blurry at first, but then when it loads correctly, it just goes into normal. Well, that's the thing that kind of bothers me sometimes. Well, don't get me wrong, it doesn't bother me all the time, but it's just something, it's something it's a little bit of a nitpicking, I guess. But, uh, anyways, let's go ahead and save five children. At least we've already saved one before we save, before we, uh, say something to Mrs. Puff and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess that probably explains it. And also, I just realized I've got the trophy earlier ago, which I'm guessing it's like you get out able to smash several amount of robots as SpongeBob. So, yeah, at the very least, I did somehow accomplish that, apparently. So, uh, yeah, that seems all pretty swell as far as this is concerned with. So, uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and smash some more Tiki, so that way we can able to grind for more, you know, shiny objects and stuff like that. So, uh... Everything else goes all fine and dandy and everything, so, uh... Anyway, and I do apologize for that sniffy nose right there, because I almost, uh... Um, got my runny nose, but I'll grab a tissue as soon as I'm able to have done this recording session, so, uh, forgive me if I botched everything else for this point, so... And of course, you're able to take control of Patrick ever since in, uh, Jellyfish Fields, so... Yeah, because obviously, much like the forms of how it does in the original version of the game, uh, basically, you can't able to actually play as every single character in every single level, so it's still relatively the same. Like, for instance, in Jellyfish Fields, that you only have to play as Spongebob and Patrick, not Sandy. And as far as downtown Bikini Bottom goes, you can only play as uh, Spongebob and Sandy. And uh, as far as the later levels comes, which are, you know, Rock Bottom, as well as the forms of... Uh, uh, you know, Mermaid Lair, and, uh, Sand Mountain, and, um, also, Kelp Forest, and, uh, also the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, and finally, Spongebob's Dream, that, uh, basically, that we have to switch over between secondary playable characters, as far as, you know, alternation, as far as this is concerned, so, uh, luckily for Spongebob himself, he can able to actually access it every single level, so, yeah, I guess that probably explains it, huh? So anyways, let's go ahead and do some, uh, well, let's just say a beach platform, or the beach towel platforming scenarios like this. Even though it always kind of reminds me like I was going through carpets and stuff like that. Oh, can I make it? Oh, nice. Okay. So, yay, we got ourselves another sock. So, hopefully, as soon as we talk to Patrick again in the hub world, then basically we will guarantee to able to get ourselves two golden spatulas at the same, uh, conversation. So... Everything else goes all fine and dandy and everything, so... Which I've no idea why I'm saying things weirdly enough at this rate, because, like I said before, I think that's as far as I can try to discuss upon for the sake of today's discussion, guys. I mean, surely that, uh, I would like to be able to mention about the forms of some more infos about what's been happening for the sake of the forms of, uh, you know, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but... Either way, though, I think I should probably save that conversation until the next day. So, uh, specifically, uh, the, let's just say the 14th of June, roughly speaking. So, uh, yeah, I'm guessing that probably explains it how. So, uh, uh -oh. anyway, so let's do some more platforming in here and there. And, of course, if you dare touch the water, in this case, uh, you know, specifically the sea, ocean, water, uh, basically, though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure that um, you're able to actually get fluked off and then you go all the way back to the actual uh, the segment you came from. And um, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, if you fell for the water twice, basically you die instantly. So, uh, because obviously, if you've seen the episode where, you know, SpongeBob was actually going to be taking his job for able to become a, uh, the, uh, the Coast Guard. And then basically, though, is the fact that, uh, he or, uh, as soon as when, uh, Patrick, uh, somehow get his twitch on this bottom. And then basically, even though it's hard to explain, because, oh, Spongebob on Duty is the name of the episode. I keep on forgetting what the episode's name was at first, but then I figure out right now. But anyway. My hero. You've saved the children. <laughs> Here's a golden spatula as a reward. Thanks, Mrs. Puff, for able to actually give me another golden spatula after, like, you know, giving you all of the 11 of those steering wheels. So, how's that for that? So, anyway, so I think that does it from here, and I think we should probably continue exploring for the most part in Ghoul Lagoon. So, oh yeah, about with the forms of SpongeBob on duty, uh episode where, you know, obviously uh, Patrick gets its uh, twitched or twisted bottom, and then he somehow 
uh, managed to able to could not swim at all while he was actually having fun on the actual sea. But then uh, next he notices that SpongeBob was get able to rescue Patrick, but then he realized he can't swim either. Well, it's hard to explain because it's been donkey's years since I actually last seen that episode. Because obviously now onto The Simpsons, uh, you know, marathon of episodes recently because Oh man, they're so hilarious to me, especially noticeable I always enjoy the a actual adult humor in here and there. Well, that's mainly because it's my cup of tea when it comes to watching The Simpsons in general, so uh... Although, don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed the Spongebob um, TV show, but only specifically the early seasons, because as far as I'm aware, the earlier seasons is by far the best seasons, so... Just in my opinion, anyway. And also, I may be biased as well, I guess. Spongebob? I heard that you were collecting golden spatulas! Yes, Bubble Buddy, I am. Have you seen one? Why, yes! We were having a sandcastle contest, and somebody put a golden spatula on the top! If I had a castle, I'd name it Fort Patty Town III, and Fort Patty Town III would have a big bake sale every Monday. Um, the golden spatula? Oh, at the top of the sand castle, right! That should be easy to reach. Well, perhaps you should see for yourself. Okay then, Bubble Buddy, I know exactly what I'm about to do. So either way though, let's just go and let the uh, more tickies get exploded and uh, activate the switch while uh, the gate was actually active. And somehow the water starts to rise. So, of course we do need to be quick about this because Obviously, again, if you fell for the water too many times, well, basically, that's, uh, you will die instantly, so. And of course, we see that ice cube, which only Patrick can able to actually use that, like if you remember from the likes of the jellyfish fields level, so, uh. But of course, we will, uh, oh, really? That little flame just come out of nowhere. Oh, that's just lame. Oh well, but at the very least we got the checkpoints, well, despite we still waiting for this gosh darn loading screens. Seriously, that's a, that's the only thing I really hate about this particular version, any forms of our dust in the originals, to me though. And that is something to do with the fact that the loading screens take much, much, much longer to load. But, seriously, so, so many times I, you know, die so many times and then next to you notice is the fact that the game just continuously trying to load and it's just take absolute forever, so... Anyway, so we'll just uh, try again, but this time we'll switch over to Patrick. So just in case we will potentially try to able to make our way to that familiar ice cube so we can probably, um, well, get that familiar sock item, so, uh... Yeah, let's just start. Oh, no, I don't want to throw it on the enemy. Ah, okay, whatever. Whatever, but at the very least, the actual ice cube is somehow respawns, so that should be good for my part. And there we go, another Patrick Sock, and we can instantly manage to able to actually break this entire sequence by going over there, and, well, we somehow made it to the checkpoint. So, huzzah for that, so... Okay, so this work against this is where things gets a bit tricky, but um, oh no, ah, oh, son of a, okay, stupid knock, stupid knockback. I really hate this kind of stuff. Seriously, why can they just fix that from the get go? But I, I get it because it's like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Oh well, we'll just keep trying anyway. So uh, oh yeah, and another thing I should probably mention about this as well. That uh, I think, fundamentally speaking, I think we've actually got about eight more days to go until the new Pixar film, Lightyear, is going to be releasing during that time. I'm not exactly sure what the reviews are going to be like exactly, but I think I should probably save that conversation until whenever we get to next month in July, because as far as I'm aware. Not again! Ah, oh, I hate the knockback! Ah, oh, Jesus Louise. Ah. Oh. This is gonna get pretty, pretty, um, stale when it comes to likely getting knocked back at times. <sighs> oh well. But nothing matters anyway because we got infinite amount of lives, unlike, uh, certain other SpongeBob games in the past, to be more specifically, uh, SpongeBob Super Pants for, or Super Sponge for the PlayStation, where basically I think. I think that game has a life system as far as I recall, 
mind you, because I've seen the actual game over screen that involves around, uh, well, Patrick is all lonely on his birthday party and stuff like that, so, yeah, I think that's as far as I can think about it, and, um, also with the GBA versions of, you know, Spongebob Squarepants games from the movie to Battle for Bikini Bottom and you name the rest, that, uh, I believe those games also has the life system as far as I'm usually recall it that, so, anyway, so let's see what's over here, I don't think it actually contains anything apart from this very peculiar, well, uh, another Patrick sock, and also the best way to able to farm some more shiny objects, and yeah, that's basically how this is going, so, uh, so before I, uh, move ahead, or move along anyway, um, oh jeez, I think I somehow skipped that particular section over there. Although, mind you, I'm pretty sure we do need to require Patrick for this, because, well, as far as I can see, I can't reach it from that particular clamshell in the distance, so... I need to be able to try to figure this out, though, especially... Well, again, it has been about two years ago since, since, since I actually, you know, last played this, basically. So, uh, forgive me if I somehow managed to be able to mess up on certain segments, but... At least I did its job, I guess, but... Yeah, because as a result, we can't just, like, reach it for a simple double jump, or even try to utilize the actual Bubble Bash uh, ability for Spongebob, because it's locked in one place, so... Yeah, I guess I have no choice but to, uh... just walk back into that exactly the same Sand Capsule segment, so... Ah, <sighs> there's gotta be a way for or no one able to actually get through there somewhere. But, uh, again, it's just the fact that sometimes my memory can sometimes feel a little bit too fake on this game. Unlike, you know, the majority of the Mario games, and, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog games, and, uh, also some other stuff, basically. So, uh, oh, and speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog, though, it's the fact that I'm pretty sure, uh, relatively speaking, oh, yeah, we somehow managed to able to contact with, uh, uh, Bubble Buddy saying, well done, Spongebob, and you name the rest. Despite the fact that I usually select, uh, Patrick for that particular segment, so... I guess nothing matters anyway, though, because... Well, it's so hard to tell. Alright, so... Let's just go ahead and climb back up again. So, um... Oh yeah, speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog stuff, though, um... I think, relatively speaking, I think we've actually got about, uh, two weeks left now until, uh, Sonic Origins for the compilation game is gonna be releasing, so... Even though so far, I actually decided able to play through, uh, on my own time, playing through, uh, multiple Sonic compilation games, which are, uh, Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn, and, um, also Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube, in addition to the Plus version as well. And on top of all that stuff though, Sonic Gems Collection, and finally, with the forms of Sonic Classic Collection on the DS. So, yeah, that pretty much summarizes as such. And, yeah, I get the feeling that I, uh, need Patrick for this. So, but luckily we've got the checkpoint right up there. So, if I, if I somehow die, then basically I can just simply just respawn right into that particular segment right there. So, uh, that sure all goes all fine and dandy if I was gonna able to try to figure this out for myself, I guess. Well, so hard to tell of what the heck am I going, and I did not meant to activate that checkpoint over there, so... Oh, that's just great. Oh yeah, um, just able to actually just look back on the forms of in the past Sonic compilation games in the past, like, I will say that Sonic Jam, uh, on the Sega Saturn was actually very, very unique during that time, back in about, you know, almost 25 years ago. And, um, also, Sonic Mega Collection, still my nostalgia, uh, Sonic compilation game I've ever played. And, uh, Sonic Gems Collection, it was actually pretty underrated in my opinion. And, uh, Sonic Mega Collection Plus is actually a really great compilation, indeed, in Fury. And as far as Sonic Classic Collection goes on the DS, um, it was good. I'm not gonna lie, it was actually a little bit better than any forms of how it does it what we had from, uh, well, luckily in European countries, we didn't get the game, um, luckily, but North Americans do, which is, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance, which nobody talks about because, you know, that game blows. So, especially noticeable after almost, uh, 16 years since when it first released, alongside with Sonic 06, so... 
But anyway, enough about that, Jimmy Jappa. So we'll just uh, go ahead and smash some more uh, tiki heads and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, jeez, okay, whatever. But at the very least, we made it here. So just in case, we're able to instantly activate something in here. So uh, let's see how this goes, hey? Hello, Gary. What's new? You don't say. Squidward bought a new sweater. Oh, he's so crazy. Wow. And there's a golden spatula at the end of this cave. Wow. But we'll save that until the next uh, video, SpongeBob, because, well, first off, let me take care of the forms of that particular, um, that golden spatula on the fourth slot. So, at least, thankfully, we can still able to actually activate that particular fast travel set. So, uh, at the very least, I'm very grateful for that. And I think, if I somehow, um, selected that fourth golden spatula mission in this Goo Lagoon place, I'm pretty sure it allows me to switch instantly to Patrick. So, at the very least, that's something to be, uh, going for the sake of time. So, because that is why the watermelon exists. So, anyway, let's just go ahead and do some more... You know, bouncy, um, you know, floaty trampolines to able to access through. And, uh, all the, every once in a while, trying to avoid a lot of those dragons that breathe fire. And, uh, do some more heavy platforming. And, hopefully, we get ourselves another golden spatula, like so. Yeah, not too bad. Especially noticeable about the fact that, well, it's pretty straightforward. So, anyways, let's, uh, teleport us back to the forms that, uh, that previous part that we've already been into, but we didn't got enough time for it. So, speaking of got, haven't got enough time, I think we should probably end things off at this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. That is the fact that we'll continue exploring through Goo Lagoon, and you pretty much know what's going to come up next at otherwise. So I'll see you guys until on Tuesday. Later, fellas.